Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brennan Bias from TikiCheck.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. A little over a year ago, I released a tutorial for a 3D text effect in Photoshop CS5 Extended and it looked something like this. And uh, this effect was pretty cool back in the day. It's got some cool 3D extrusion with some materials on it and they're kind of uh, rotated into a point off to the side. We've got a cool texture, blah, blah, blah. You get the picture. This thing was just pretty fun to make back in the day. And uh, seeing as we have Photoshop CS6 extended and it's got some new 3D features, there have been quite a few people wondering how you would recreate this in Photoshop's new 3D settings. And so basically, that is what we're going to do today, is recreate this in Photoshop CS6 extended. And... Keep in mind, you do have to have extended in order to have the 3D features. There's a lot of people that kind of forget that point when they try and do this stuff that they don't have extended. So it's important. I need to keep reminding you guys to have extended. It's insane. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so I figured that it would be kind of boring if all we did was recreate this uh, exact effect in CS6 extended. So I decided to throw in a little bit of flair. And the flair looks like... Da -da -da -dum. Boom! This. I decided to change the color from pink to blue, simply because I like blue. Uh, added some different kinds of textures with some cool reflections and things of that sort. And we've also got a bit of a uh, glassy, frosty look kind of applied on top, just to kind of add a little bit of pizzazz to the overall effect. And so, as you can see, we've got something pretty cool, so let's dive in and recreate this bad boy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go to File, New, and we'll make a new document here. And you can name it whatever, like, uh, not, not 2D, 3D, Extrusion Stuffs. There we go. And for this, what I'm going to do is set my width and height to 1920 by 1080. And, of course, make sure your resolution is at 72 pixels per inch with an RGB color mode. And for the time being, we'll keep the background contents as white. And with that, we'll hit OK. And I'll hit Control zero to zoom into the canvas size. We get a nice view of what we're doing here. And let's start diving in and adding the text. So let's grab our text tool by hitting the letter T. And the font that I'm going to be using is called Berlin Sans FB Demi. Did I just say Sans like Sans? That's just bizarre. Anyway, so that's the font that I'll be using. If you want to use a different one, that's completely OK. I'm mean, going to have a font size of 525 points. I'm setting the anti-aliasing to smooth. And the color I'm using is this light blue, which is 00AEFF. And we'll hit OK. And so I'm just going to click on the left-hand side, type in a capital C, and hit the Enter key next to my number pad to uh, confirm that text. And I'll basically just do the same thing for the H, for the E, for the other C, and another K. There we go. And so I'll just uh, really quickly just kind of position these around a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much. I just kind of want an idea of, you know, where they're going to be uh, going to be and all that. And before I get into the 3D extrusion portion of all this, I want to make the, the letters here pop out a little bit. So let's start off with the first letter C and I'm going to add a gradient overlay. And all I'm going to do is change it from a blend mode of normal to soft light. And so that'll just give this a, a gentle gradient on top of the blue. And next up, what I'm going to do is add an inner glow. And for that, I'm going to send the blend mode to linear dodge with an opacity of 20% and a noise set to 10%. And I'm going to set the color to a pure white. And I'll change the size to 45 pixels. And so that'll give us a nice glow on the inner side of the letter here. And with that, we'll hit OK. And I want to copy this to the rest of the letters. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the effects icon and click copy layer style. And so now that that's copied, I'll select all of the other letters and I'll right click one of them and go to paste layer style. And I will paste that layer style to all of those letters. So let's go ahead and close up these little tabs over here on the right hand side. And let's also select all of these letters here. And we'll right click and go to rasterize layer style. So that will flatten all of these letters so that way they're only pure pixels and that way they're a, uh, a layer that we can extrude in 3D space. So now that we've got all of these flattened into layers that we can extrude, let's go to 3D 
and we'll click New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. And when you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to switch over to the 3D workspace. And just for the sake of consistency between you and me, I'm going to click Yes. Okay, so here we go. We are in 3D space, and we've got all of these letters all over the place. And um, I don't really like having H-E-C-K. Uh, I don't want to have those letters in the way while I'm messing with this. So I'm going to go back to my layers and turn off the eyes for the H-E-C-K. Okay? All right, so let's go back to our 3D, and let's start moving stuff around before we get into the extrusions. Now, I'm just going to assume that not everyone watching this video is 100% familiar with the tools that are involved with 3D. So I'm just going to give you guys a really quick rundown of what each of these icons I'm going to be using do. So I'm going to select the C object over here, so that way it's selected, and I can just demonstrate this a little bit better. And if you go up here, you'll see there's a 3D mode, and there will be five icons here. The first one is basically a free rotation tool. So if you select that and start clicking and dragging around randomly, you'll see that you can basically free ball wherever the rotation of the letter goes. Now, if you were to select the second icon, you'll see it basically just rotates it parallel to your screen. Well, kind of, sort of. You, you get the idea. It just basically rotates it for you rather than just having a free... Uh, roll, I guess you could say. The third icon basically moves it up, down, and side to side. Like so. Pretty simple. The third icon will pan this closer and further away from your camera depending on whether you drag up or down. And at the same time, you can slide it left and right. So, pretty handy to have. The third icon changes the size of an object. So if you wanted to, you could basically just click and drag downwards to scale something down or drag ups or up to scale it back up and of course I'm just gonna undo that real quick because I like the size that it's at and we'll just start uh, going on with the tutorial so real quick I'm gonna select the current view which is basically another word for saying the current camera that you're using I'm gonna use the third icon and click and drag downwards to move the camera upwards a ways and that way we can have the actual 3d plane a little further down so I'll go back and I'll select the C object and I'll start messing with the settings on this thing. So I'm thinking I'll slide this back a little bit over here. And let's maybe move it up. And let's give this a little bit of rotation. And maybe we'll have it turn a little bit more that way as well. And just start messing with that like so. Looking pretty decent. So now that I've got this in a place that I like, I'm going to start messing with the extrusion itself. So we're going to go to the second icon right here in the properties menu called deform. We'll give that a click and you'll see we've got all these different options to mess with the extrusion and such. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the extrusion depth all the way up. So that's 2,500 for the extrusion. Next up, we're going to change the taper and put it all the way down to zero. That will change the extrusion to go to a point. Next up, we'll add in a little bit of twist. So you can either go left or right, depending on which way you want to do the twist. Personally, I think I'm going to go left a little bit until it's at about, uh, let's say, minus 5 or 600 percent. Or, sorry, degrees, not, not percent. Ha. Huh. Next up, we'll change up the horizontal angle and the vertical angle. So messing with these two sliders, you'll basically get an idea of where the heck this bad boy is going to go. So I'll maybe put this down a little bit, and of course, I'll move it off to the right. So that way, we got this nice little curl with a point on the end. Looking pretty snazzy. So uh, now that we've got that done, let's just start making this look a little bit more beautiful, I guess you could say. First up, I'll go select the C extrusion material inside the C object, and I'm going to go click this little drop down arrow next to the sphere to open up my materials. Now, if you don't have these materials that you see right here, there's an easy way to get them for free. Just click the little cog icon and click load materials. And it's going to say that you can download some more materials for free and basically just hit go and it brings up this website where you can go download the versatile materials, image based lights, what have you. But basically just click the versatile materials, download those and they should be able to install directly into Photoshop. So once you have those installed, basically just go into the little drop down arrow or drop down menu should say. And I'm going to add in this little checkerboard like uh, material because I don't know why, but I kind of like having the uh, checkerboard material from the original showing up in this recreation here. So next up, what we're going to do is go to the reflection and amp that up all the way to 100%. 
So that way this thing becomes nice and shiny when we start adding in all of the other objects around it. And so one more thing that I want to do to make this thing a little bit more interesting is by going to the C object and we're going to go to the third icon which says cap and give that a click. And for this we're going to go to the inflation and change the strength from 0 to 5%. And then we'll just click somewhere else so that applies. This will essentially just make the surface of the C a little bit more round and more bubbly looking. That's basically all there is to the letter C, and we can start doing the same thing to the other letters. Obviously with a little bit of variation, so that way it's not too repetitive. So I'll go back to my layers, I'll go to the letter H and turn it back on, and I'll go to 3D, New 3D Extrusion, and that will put it into its own 3D plane. Now if we want to, which I'm going to recommend highly, we can merge this into the other 3D plane, so that way the C and the H can intersect in the whole... Uh, same atmosphere, I guess you could say. So we'll go back to our layers, and we'll make sure that the letter H is directly above the letter C. And with the letter H selected, we'll hit Control or Command E on our keyboard, and we'll merge that down into the same scene as the letter C. So now if we go back to our 3D panel, you'll see we have a, a group called H Layer. And if we open that up, you'll see we have the H object that we can use to basically move it around, things of that sort. So I'll move this off to the side, and I'll maybe slide it forward so that way it's a little bit closer to the front of the C, maybe a little bit back here, and I'll just kind of start messing with the rotation, things of that sort, just to kind of give this thing a little bit more uh, interest. And so once again, I'll go to the deform, let's put up the extrusion depth, put down the taper, and of course we'll add in a little bit of twist, maybe we'll go the other direction, and let's just have it go down and uh, you know what, let's twist it the other direction so that way it curves behind the C. No, that way. So let's do that and then we'll put the horizontal angle the other direction. There we go, starting to show up much better. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to work for a second and make a fool of myself. Go figure. So anyway, now that I've got this kind of going in the right direction that I want, uh, if you have any issues on, on your end, just be sure to play with the, the settings because the, the twist and the angle, they tend to need to match up in order to get it to go a certain direction. For example, I wanted this to twist to the left, so I slided the, sorry, I put the slider to the left and the horizontal angle slider to the left, and it ended up going down into the left. Kind of handy. So anyway, let's go ahead and start making this a little bit more interesting once again by going to the extrusion material. Uh, this time I'll leave the material default on this, by, but I'll put the reflection up to 100% again. And of course, going back and adding a cap on top of the original uh, font here. And uh, there we go. Nice and shiny. And we've got some uh, inflation going on. Let's move on to the next layer. So we're going to our layers. Let's turn on the letter E, and we'll do the same thing. New 3D extrusion from selected layer, and we'll go to our layers to make sure this is all set up just fine. We'll hit Control E, that'll merge it down into the same scene, and voila, we have the E layer right here in the scene. So let's just bring this forward. Uh, maybe I'll move this down a little bit. And let's just start putting in some cool rotation and stuff. Maybe move it a little bit closer. And let's just put this right underneath the H. Cool. So next up, let's put up the extrusion depth just a little bit on the E since there's not a whole lot of room. We'll go to the deform. And let's just put a little bit of twist. Um, let's just do it to the right. Let's put the taper all the way down. And let's put the angle off to the left. There we go. Look at that. Pretty sweet. So I've got a positive amount of twist and a negative amount of angle. And that's creating this weird little shape that you see going off to the left. I don't know what it is about that shape, but I like it a lot. So I'll, I'm just going to move this on in, make it a little bit more interesting. And maybe I'll go back to the H, reposition it some, maybe to... Make it look a little bit more continuous, if that makes any sense. Okay. So now that that's set up, we can move on to the next letter. Actually, no, that's not set up. What am I talking about? We still need to make the extrusion material look a little bit more fancy. So let's go back to the E extrusion material. 
And this time, the material I'm going to use is this sucker light here that looks like a dodgeball called Fun Texture 2. We'll give that a click, and you'll see that the dodgeball texture gets applied to the extrusion material, but it's red. We don't want red. We want this to be gray. Or maybe you do want it to be red. What? I don't even care. Either way, you do what you want, but I'm going to go to the diffuse, give that a click, and I'll change the diffuse from that reddish color to a slightly darker gray color. And with that, we'll hit OK. We've got a nice little texture going on there. And once again, we'll put up the reflection to 100%, and we'll go back to the E group because I keep forgetting about the freaking inflation. So I'll put that up to 5%, and there we go. It's got some inflation. Looking a little bit better. So let's go back to the letter C, 3D. Do a 3D extrusion from selected layer, and we'll merge it down into the current scene. Now, I, I did fail to, uh, to tell you guys something. You do not have to be in the Layers panel to use that shortcut Control-E. You can be in the 3D layer. You don't have to switch back and forth. Okay? Makes sense? Hopefully. Anyway, so let's start bringing this sucker forward. And if, let's, uh, let's turn it this way instead. Actually, no, I'll turn it this way so that way it's not mimicking the other C too much. But I will turn it, I'll turn it this way this time, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. And I'll put it up right here. And let's see what we can do with the deform to make things a little bit more interesting. Let's put up the deform a little bit, taper it just a bit, and maybe move the angle off to the side over there. Something like that. That's kind of interesting, right? I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, put on the cap before I forget, and we'll do our regular 5%. And then we'll go to the extrusion material, and I'm going to do the same dodgeball effect that I did on the E, so I'll click that. And then we'll, uh, once again, we'll change the diffuse to a darker gray. There we go. And we'll put the reflection all the way up to 100%, and that's it for the second C, and now we're ready for our final letter, the K. So... Let's extrude that layer and merge it down into the other 3D scene with Control or Command E. And let's go to K layer and we'll bring this forward once again. I don't want to overlap this too much. All right, so this time let's rotate this a lot more than I normally would. Let's maybe put this down and to the side a little bit. And let's go to the deform. Let's put the extrusion depth all the way up. Put the taper all the way down. And let's see what we can do with the rotation. Let's rotate it to the right. And let's mess with the angle a little bit. And let's put it down to the left. All right. Um, so let's put this uh, right about, let's put this somewhere right on right here. And then let's go back to the K, the extrusion material there. Let's put up the reflection all the way. And this time around, I'm going to make the material into this stone marble right next to the checker. And I'll give that a click. And let's just see how it's looking. I need to put the reflection back up. There we go. Maybe I'll put the diffuse down. I wonder if that's going to make any difference. Doesn't really seem like it. Oh, well, no big deal. So now we've got all of our letters in a way that seems pretty decent. I mean, obviously, if you're using different letters, you'd probably go back and tweak it a little bit differently. But uh, one thing that I know I want to do for sure is go to the infinite lights, and I'll change the shadow softness all the way up to 100% because I really like soft shadows. But of course, keep in mind that that's going to amp up your render time a lot. <laughs> All right, um, so that's basically all there is, except uh, I do need to go back to the K layer and put on the 5% inflation on the cap. And there we go, that's looking decent. So now that everything's set, I can click the render button on the bottom right hand portion of the properties panel, and that will start rendering out my 3D scene. So I'm going to let this sit here for maybe uh, 20 minutes or so until it's done, in which case I will come back and we'll set up the backgrounds to kind of wrap everything up and bring it all together. So I'll be back soon. Don't go away. All right. So it looks like everything is uh, basically about as high quality as it's going to get. So let's just go ahead and start clicking on the canvas here to, to interrupt that render and finish things up. 
And so, let's see, now that we've got things set up, I'm thinking it's about time we add in our background. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my, uh, my default workspace here. And I'm going to go to my backgrounds and double click it and rename this to BG. And for the BG, I'm just going to go and apply a gradient overlay. I'm going to change the style from linear to radial. And I'm going to set the angle to zero degrees. And let's see, for the center color, I'm going to use a pretty light bluish color, maybe a little bit darker than that. So right now I'm at 64C7EB, we'll hit OK. And then for the outer color, I'll just use a slightly darker color. So something right there is actually looking pretty decent, maybe a little bit lighter. That's not too bad. So that looks like 74A5C4, hit OK. Hit OK again, and OK one third time, there we go. So now we've got this uh, nice background going on here with our 3D text, but I want to add a little bit of contrasting and some other things to kind of make this thing stand out just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is merge everything into a new layer by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E, or Command, Option, Shift, E if you're on a Mac. And so that will merge everything into a new layer and make sure that's on the top of the other two layers. And we'll just call this merged. There we go. And then we'll duplicate the merged layer by hitting Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And we'll rename this to blur because we're going to go to filter. We'll go to blur. We'll add a Gaussian blur. And I'm going to set that to a radius of 10 pixels and hit OK. And I'm going to set the blur uh, to overlay. And so that'll basically brighten everything up and give it a little bit of a glow to it all. So if you take a look at that, you can see the difference that we're getting. I might actually go back in and tone this down just a little bit. Um, so about 70% is looking a little bit better. That nah, doesn't really make too much difference, I say. And so uh, let's see, what else can we do? Let's go to the adjustments panel. Let's add in a black and white adjustment layer. But we're going to set the blend mode of that to vivid light with a fill of 10%. And so the purpose of that is to basically just darken up the shadows on this and maybe add a little bit of contrast to the uh, the glow and things of that sort. So let's see if we uh, get a little before and after. Okay, maybe we'll tone that back down once again. Let's go somewhere right around there. So I put this back down to about... Let's do 45% on the blur and keep in 10% for the black and white adjustment layer. And so one last thing that I want to do is to add in that glassy feeling on top of it all. So once again, with the topmost layer selected, we'll hit Control, Alt, Shift, E, or Command, Option, Shift, E, and we'll call this glass. And with the glass layer selected, let's go to Filter. We're going to go to our Filter Gallery. And in the filter gallery, you'll want to go to the distort section and click on glass. And for that, you'll have the settings set to glass with a distortion all the way up to 20, a smoothness of 2, the texture set to frosted, and the scaling at 100%. And you should have something that looks kind of like this. And once you've got that, or after tweaking some settings, you know, do whatever the heck you want. But once you have it at a setting that you like, just go hit OK. And then we'll set the blend mode of the glass layer to lighten. Then we'll change the opacity down to about 50%. And so that way it's there, but it's not completely overwhelming. So a little bit of a before and after. You see that just adds in that nice glassy look. Let's take a closer look and see how this sucker turned out. I would say that I'm actually pretty content with how this turned out. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit different than I originally planned with the positioning of the letters and stuff. But, you know what? I'm pretty content with the overall look. Uh, the only issue with this uh, particular style, I guess, is that the sometimes the, the point of this H goes through the... Uh, uh, she what's the name of it the the horizon so that way it doesn't make any shadows or anything like that But you don't really notice too much and overall you still get a pretty cool effect So that's about all we have for you today guys. It's uh, basically how you create this effect in Photoshop CS6 extended If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or if you have any comments that you would uh, you know like to say for me Just leave a comment in the comment section below 
And of course, you guys have a nice Tuesday. I'll see you next week. Peace out.